It just the head just has to go. What's up, Big Bear Homestead? We'll wait and let uh, let the people come over from J and J uh, Farms. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? What's up, old ways? What up, Steve? What's up, Rain Country? Can't find my Dutch hat. What's up, Amanda Homestead? Got you licking chicken. <laughs> Let's see. How many people are in here now? Does it say? What's up, Mud Pie? We'll let some more people start rolling in. Is that Balderman Farms? Does it say how many's in here? What's up, Kathy? The Nelson Homestead. Hey, what's up? Tawanya, what's up? 14, okay. All right, let's start. <coughs> 17 now, sweet. Hey, today uh, we're going to talk about rabbits. Uh, but first, I was going to let you guys know this is uh, this show is part of the Homestead Network. And uh, if you guys haven't checked out the website, it's thehomesteadnetwork.com. And uh, we're up to 19 now. Good. And uh, let's see here. Oh, I just want to give a, a little heads up to all my moderators. Um, if someone asks a question and it's not in all caps, it's not a big deal. You don't have to just pound them for it. Uh, but they need to know their question might not get seen and might not get answered. Uh, so if I miss one, if you guys want to repost it, uh, post it in all caps. They'll, you know, they'll let you know, but it's not a huge deal. You, you just won't get your question answered if I don't see it. So let's see here. What's up, W5 Farms? What's up, Mr. Rain? Gravy Farmstead. Hey, what's up? How many are we up to now, guys? Twenty-eight. Okay, sweet. All right, guys. Uh, most of you guys probably know we got we just got rabbits uh, about a week or two ago, and I built a rabbit hutch last week, and I got a video posted on that. Um, this, I'm by far uh, a novice at this. I don't, I don't know a whole lot about rabbits, but I've been doing a lot of reading. <clears throat> My wife's been looking stuff up, and uh, I just want to talk a little bit about um, rabbits tonight. Um, I'm sure Big Bear, and I don't know if Hope's, uh, Hope's in here. She, she raises rabbits. Big Bear used to uh, raise rabbits. So if I tell you guys something that's wrong, it's I looked this stuff up, so it's wrong on there. You guys just correct me, or if you guys want to add anything, just let me know. And uh, I'm going to talk about, um, oh wait, before we start talking about rabbits, um, there was, I was on um, Rain Country Home, Homestead's live show the other day, and I just want to clear this up in just in case there's any confusion with it. Uh, me and Big Bear, we always bust on each other every chance we get, and uh, I, was, I was throwing a joke at him, and uh, he got it, and he timed me out, which was perfectly fine, I expected it. <laughs> and uh, I think there's a few people that got mad for him timing me out. But guys, it was seriously, it was just a joke. Uh, we're both Marines and we bust on each other all the time. So um, if you guys are mad at him, don't be mad at all because I expected to get timed out for uh, messing with him. And uh, I expect you guys, uh, well, he's a moderator. I was going to have I was gonna have you guys time him out. But I think I don't know if I can or not. But uh, it was all a joke, guys. And uh it's all fun and games, so don't take offense if, if I got timed out last time. It, it was just all in good fun. 
All right, since I got that out of the way, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna talk about uh, meat rabbits. There's three. There's three meat rabbits I was gonna talk about. It's the New Zealand whites, uh, the Californian rabbits, and the silver fox rabbits. Uh, does anyone in here have? I've never heard of the silver fox rabbits. But I guess they're a pretty good meat rabbit. Does anyone in here have any of the silver fox? Let's see. If you do, uh, let me know. Oh, Mr. Rain, did I win the knife or the rifle and knife? Right, let me clear something up. The rifle's not a giveaway. The knife is. It was a joke. Come on now. Uh, all right, let's go over some New Zealand. The New Zealand whites. Uh, the New Zealand. The New Zealand whites were developed in the United States, uh, not in New Zealand, hence the name. But still, they were developed in uh, <coughs> the United States. Uh, they are. A descendant from the New Zealand Reds, which were likely developed in California and developed from a mix of breeds, possibly including the heavyweight. If I, I'll probably say this wrong. The Belgian hares. They say they're now extinct. If you guys can see me or not, they're now extinct. And uh, I guess those are. I don't have New Zealand whites, but I know some of you guys in here probably do. And uh, let's read something else on. I think. Commercially, New Zealand white rabbits were not bred to be domestic pet. Instead, they were bred for their excellent fur and meat. Friars are friars are slaughtered at two months of age, and older rabbits are sold as roasters. The rabbits will rabbits with high grades of fur are used to make fur coats. I didn't know that, and uh, fur trimmings. The lower grades are used to make felt hats and glove. Linings, the New Zealand white rabbits are the number one meat rabbit in the United States. That's pretty good to know. And I, you know, like I said, I'm new to this, this stuff, so I'm learning this stuff as, as we go. And uh, most of you guys that have rabbits probably have the New Zealand or the Californians, I'm guessing, if they're for meat. Meat firm pets, Kathy, yep. Let's see here. Dutch, what is the name of that fan on the wood stove again? Uh, it's the Eco Fan. I got a review on it. Mr. Rand, you like that giveaway? Yeah, uh, Big Bear, that's the Eco Fan. What's up, Freaky? Good evening. If I miss you guys, sorry, I'll try to give you guys shouts as I see you. What's up, Wee Tree? Okay, uh, now I got the California rabbits, Californians, and I'll read a little bit on this since we're kind of just going over. The Californians, also known as the California white, <coughs> excuse me, is a breed of domestic rabbit developed in early 1920s by George West in Southern California. He crossed a Himalayan, he crossed Himalayan breeds and the standard chinchilla rabbit. See, my friends got chin, a chinchilla. Uh, it doesn't look like a rabbit, but... I guess they have chinchilla rabbits and they have chin just chinchillins. I don't know. Do you know, Brandy? Lady Dutch, do you know? <laughs> she don't have a clue. Uh, let's see. The offspring, the breed, and then cross the offspring to New Zealand whites. So the Californians are offbreed of New Zealand whites and the chinchilla rabbit. They, the purpose of this breed was to have a good meat and fur breed, but also to raise for show purposes. <coughs> the breed did not come popular for about 15 years after development. Huh, that's kind of weird. Let's see here. Has anyone got anything to add to California rabbits? That's what we got four of those. We got three does and one buck. Captain, they are considered threatened. Grits and gravy, we raise New Zealand white. Sweet. I knew, I knew probably most of you guys, that's what you guys raise if you have meat rabbits. We also have the same fan. We got ours about five years ago. It's going pretty hard right now. It's actually, I had to open the window because it was starting to warm up in here. Yep, eco fan. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about these rabbits for a little bit, and then we can go on whatever subject you guys want to. But uh, <coughs> I'll tell you guys a story. I don't think I told uh, my wife this yet. It's actually kind of freaked me out for a minute. Well, she's going to hear it for the first time. Let's see. Yes, they are different animals, and I have a giant chinchilla in California. Oh, cool. How you say your 
I can't. I don't know how to say that homestead. <clears throat> I'll tell you guys a little story uh, for a minute. Uh, the other day when, when we got these rabbits, I was outside building that hutch. <coughs> and my uh, and Gabby, my German Shepherd. If you guys know who Gabby is, she's my uh, German Shepherd guard dog, home, homestead guard dog. She takes care of everything. Well, she disappeared for about 15, 20 minutes, and that's not like her. So I knew she was getting into something, and she's been sniffing around where I had the uh, the buck rabbit over in his cage. And uh, I knew she couldn't get him. I didn't think she could get him anyways. So I know she was gone. Dutch, do you have the provide heat for your rabbits? We treat. No, I haven't provided any heat for them. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. But anyways, uh, I'll get sidetracked when I start seeing your guys' questions. But anyways, uh, she was gone for 15, 20 minutes. I was like, man, they ain't like her. She's into something. I knew she'd been over there by them rabbits. <coughs> so I yelled at her. I said, Gabby, come here. Well, about 15 seconds later, she pops her head up out of the weeds and starts walking towards me. And she had something in her mouth. And I was like, what is she chewing on? Because uh, it kind of looked, looked a little looked furry. I was like, what's she got? And uh, so I walk over. I have her come to me. I walk over a little bit. And she, you guys, she had a rabbit's foot in her mouth. I, my heart just sunk. I was like, oh my gosh, my wife's going to come outside and see this rabbit's foot in Gabby's mouth. And she's going to be like, see, told you she shouldn't have got rabbits. She's already ate one of them. Well, I pulled it out of her mouth and it was a fresh kill. I was like, holy crap. So I, so I didn't scold her yet because I wanted, I had to go investigate. So I went over to the rabbit's cage and to where I had my three uh, does. And I'm looking at him. One's kind of laying on the side. I'm like, is it alive? I don't see any blood or nothing anywhere. And uh, so I'm looking at it. And the other two are hopping around. They're all fine. It finally stands up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it has a nub. It's missing a freaking foot. So I'm looking at it, and I open it up, and I move it around. And I was like, oh, and it had its leg. I thought it was a little nub, but it was its foot. You know, this is like the, the second day we had these rabbits. So, and I haven't had rabbits since I was like six or seven years old. And, uh. So I'm like, okay, they're all good. All those are good. So the only, the only thing it could have been, she got my buck. So I was like, man, that buck's got to be dead. So I walked over over around the corner and opened that buck up, and it just looks up at me. And I'm like, are you, are you missing a leg? And so I move it around, and he had all his legs. I'm like, where did she get this, this rabbit's foot at? It was crazy. So I went over, I walked over to where she was at, and she had half a rabbit sitting there. She caught a wild rabbit because... I haven't killed any rabbits out here. We, I've been letting the population grow. And uh, we've been out here three or four years now. and I haven't killed one, so we're seeing a lot more rabbits. Well, she actually caught one of the rabbits, and she ate half of it. I let her, head, I let her go ahead and finish it off because it was her kill. She got it. She's protecting the homestead. But it freaked me out for me. I thought she somehow got in there and pulled one of them rabbits' legs out, but she didn't. All right, enough for the story. All right, we treat. No, we treat. I don't provide any – I haven't provided any heat for the rabbits. From what, I re from what I've been reading – uh, I just put a, a, a tarp over their cage to block the wind, and I put some hay in there. Um, I talked to uh, Big Bear Homestead. We had a little conference call, and he said, man, go ahead and put hay in there. It's fine. It ain't, it ain't going to hurt them. So I put some hay in there, and I put a tarp over it. Wind blocked them. But from what I've been reading, they actually adapt very well to the, to the wet, uh, cold weather. So uh, do you, does anyone in here put heat, heat lamps on their rabbits? Let's see. Is there any questions yet? Yeah, she was trying to bring me some more rabbits all the way. That's right. Mr. Rain, I'm, I'm getting more more animals than uh, Jason is. My Jimmer Shepherd's catching them all. That's right, old way, Steve. She, she wanted to get her own. Okay, we talked about the California rabbits. That's what I got. And let's see, I didn't know, but there, I guess they're bred a lot for uh, for the purpose of showing. So that's pretty cool. It's funny, too, because I'm looking at a picture right now of them, and it looks identical to mine. So I know Minor California's guy wasn't lying to me. I don't know why he would, but they're big. Mine are, I think, five and a half months old. Let's see. Let's go to the silver fox rabbit. Um, does it, I don't know if anyone answered this earlier, but does anyone in here have a silver fox rabbit? Do you guys have those? Oh, what did I do with the rabbit? Uh, my German Shepherd finished it off. Real good protein for her. Saved me on a day's food. Feed for her. I don't have any rabbits. I don't recall heat lamps on them when I was a kid. 
Why did you choose the California rabbits? Okay, Kathy, good, qu good question. Why did I choose the California rabbits? <coughs> because I got a really good deal on them. That's the only reason why. And I've been looking at rabbits for several years now. I've always kind of, I've always wanted to get rabbits. And I just never really pursued it at all. And uh, I was just browsing on Craigslist. And I seen some California, I seen some rabbits. Meat, I thought I didn't meet rabbits. Because uh, I was really just wanting to get some to butcher, just to eat. But then I got such a, I got a really good deal on these ones. You let her in. I got a really good deal on these ones. I, I called the guy and I said, hey, you still got the rabbits for sale? And he said, yeah, I got three does and a buck. They're about um, five months old. And he wanted like $60 for them. And I and I, I said, so how much you want for me? He goes, man, I'll tell you what, I'll take $20 for him." And I said, deal. Five bucks a piece, you can't beat that. That's about the cheapest I've ever seen. Without someone just giving them to you. But that's why I got them. Silver fox are threatened, according to the livestock Okay, if they're threatened, can you actually can you still raise them and, and butcher them? Are they like protected or what? I would assume you can still raise them and help the population, I guess. Wild rabbits dig burrows. Yep. What's up, Luke? Silver fox rabbits are on the arc of taste for slow food. I said, yes, you can. Okay, cool, Big Bear. All right, I'll give you guys a little. Let me, let me read a little bit of the silver fox. The silver fox rabbit is a rare breed of domestic rabbit developed by Walter B. Gerland of North Canton, Ohio, and is a breed and is bred for, <laughs> for meat, show, and fur. The breed is recognized by the American Rabbit Breeders Association. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find out. The silver fox breed was developed after 14 years of selective breeding by Walter B. Garland of North Canton, Ohio, and was the third breed to be developed in the United States. It started when a black checkered giant doe was bred to English silver, to English silvers, a rabbit of unknown heritage. In 1925, the breed was accepted by the ARBA at the Colorado Springs Convention. The silver fox was originally the American heavyweight um, silver, but the name was changed to Silver Fox 1929. In 1971, the National Silver Fox Rabbit Club was founded with 18 silver fox breeders as members. Today, the silver fox is said to be more of the rarest rabbit breeds in America, and it is considered threatened by the American livestock breed. There comes, that's what you guys are talking about. The silver fox is also recognized by the Slow Food USA Arc of Taste. Cal, okay. Now, Big Bear, what does that actually mean? It's recognized by the Slow Food USA Arc of Taste. Foods in, in danger of, ex okay, that means they're, they're endangered or they're going to be extinct. Okay, I will school you later on the art taste later, Marine. <laughs> Kathy, yes, they want folks to raise, breed, increase, and yeah, that's what I was thinking exactly. I've, I'm new to this rabbit stuff, guys. You know that, so I don't even know what the art taste slow food is. They call your grandpa the silver fox. What's up, Rico's place? Uncle Rico's in the house. Rico, you guys got any uh, rabbits out on the farm? Hey, all right. Now, I went over those three, and I won't talk any more about different breeds. Um, you guys can look some more up, uh, not to bore you too much. But I looked up a little history back, back in the day. It said the Romans and rabbits. A Roman emperor issued a coin which, on which Spain is represented with a rabbit at, the feet, at her feet. So the Romans really enjoyed the rabbits. <coughs> Although semi domesticate Domestication started in the Roman period. In this initial phase, rabbits were kept in large walled pens and were allowed to breed freely. Okay, let's get let's talk about that. I'll ask Big Bear. You were board director of Slow Food Group. That's cool. There's a lot to tell you. Okay. Maybe you should put a little video out on that. Hey. Your mom needs to drink. Your mom does? Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, 
Okay, back in the Roman period. You know, I talked to uh, Uncle Rico about this, about um, the inbreeding and stuff, because in the wild, they don't know if they're brother and sister or uh, dad, uh, daughter, aunt, whatever, you know. So if you talk to people, they're like, don't, you don't, you don't inbreed them, inbreed them, you know. But that brings up the question, if the Romans were just putting them in a big pen and letting them free, there's a lot of inbreeding going on. So do any of you guys, what's your opinion on that, guys? What's your opinion on letting, uh, you know, your your uh, your rabbits just free range? I think Hope free range is her, but I don't, know, I don't think she keeps her uh, her uh, buck in there with them. But have any of you guys ever done that like the Romans used to do? Romans held their rabbits in high regards and respected their usefulness. When the Romans invaded Britain in A.D. 43, they brought their precious bu uh, bunnies with, <coughs> with it, and that's how they got started in the U.K., Okay. Why doesn't it show me on here? It does. You have to change your buck out. Okay, when well you say you have to change your buck out, but how? There's. I see my daughter behind me. Go to bed. Go to bed, sis. Uh, when you change your buck out, uh, video bomb for sure. She's trying to sneak in here and get a, get on there. When you change your buck out, do you, uh, you change it out every so often? Is that what you're doing? You go ahead and leave a buck in there for three or four breedings and then change your buck out? and just get, Is that what you're talking about? Colonial breeding, hard to regulate, breed improvement. Many videos on about, okay, cool. I got to look that up. <coughs> squirrel, you got squirrels? Rico raises squirrels if anyone wants to. If anyone's got any question about squirrels, that's Rico. I haven't seen urban uh, urban girl in here yet. Oh, there's actually one thing I want to bring up, and I think uh, Big Bear might know something about this. Um, <coughs> I found this earlier when I was doing some research to talk to you guys about. But it says many rabbit raisers also raise earthworms or red wiggles wigglers. The worms will break. I didn't know this. This is actually pretty cool. The worms will break down and clean the bed just under the rabbit's cages, turning the manure into black potting soil. Several species of worms, most notably night crawlers and red worms, can be grown in the manure. The worms also help keep the manure from smelling, from smelling bad, and could be sold as, as gardeners for uh, verm, uh, vermic compo composting. Uh, I said the word, I don't know, and for fishing bait, but. Look at types of breeding, line breeding, okay. So Big Bear, is that why you guys had worms? Is when you had rabbits to break down the manure? I'll tell you, that's one thing I've noticed, guys, is uh, being new to rabbits. They do, they smell worse than the chickens. Because I got them out there by the chickens. But I, it's a, it's a, you can smell it's it's the rabbits. And I'm guessing it's from all the urine. Yes, it's gardening gold. I look, actually looked that up earlier in my notes. All right, Big Bear. Since so you're kind of the rabbit guy in here, I'm thinking. Okay, Big Bear, what what do you call a rabbit that lives indoors? Go. You got one guess. Let's see. Let's wait for it now. Let's see if he gets it right. Don't look it up. You should know this. What do you call a rabbit that lives indoors? I'm waiting for a reply. I think he's Googling it. Ah, uh, Big Bear, you're wrong. Is, does anyone else know what you call a, a rabbit that lives indoors? There's actually actually have a name for him. Southern Hillbilly, what's up? Okay, nobody knows? Okay. It's called a house rabbit. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I, my wife didn't get it either. Okay, a little. I'll just throw a couple little facts out for you guys. It's called a delay. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Okay. And he's already present. I agree. I've been running out. Okay. Rabbits can only. Okay. You guys probably knew this. I didn't know this. 
Rabbits can only breathe through their nose, so you will never see a panting rabbit. I'm sure you guys already knew. Bugs Bunny, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know they just breathe through their nose. That's why I was reading also, if you see their uh, stuffed up, you better take them to the vet or, or suction them out because they'll, they won't be able to breathe. Peanut hay will reduce the smell of the urine. Okay, cool. Thanks, Gravy Farmstead. Yeah, Arnett House Shoes. <laughs> <coughs> I got a question for you guys. And you guys probably know the answer. But I was, I was reading this and it kind of brought to my attention. It says, more than half the world's rabbits, you know where they live? More than half the world's rabbits, they live in America. And that, that kind of, it, more than more, the world's, more than half the world's population of rabbits live in North America. But how come we don't see rabbits more in stores? I'm sure there's some selective stores you can buy rabbits and stuff. In some restaurants you can, you can buy to eat. But you would think there would be just like chicken. You know, uh, if there's Kentucky Fried Chicken, Charlie's Chicken, Church's Chicken, Popeye's Chicken. Uh, what did I miss? I know I missed one of them. But all these chicken places, but we got all these rabbits and all over the world, people raise these rabbits to eat and they sell them at the market and they sell them in restaurants. You know, it's, it's like chicken in other countries, but in America, it's not. Like you say, yeah, it's pita. Okay, yeah, Big Bear pita. That's probably it. <coughs> I guess people look at rabbits more for as a pet and they don't think outside the box. You know, that's why I've come to realize a lot of these, uh, a lot of homesteaders, uh, a lot of homesteaders raise rabbits for meat because they know they know the the value in having rabbits, not only for gardening but for the meat production. <coughs> you would just think it would be more common common in America. The Easter Bunny, that's right, Kathy, because of Bugs Bunny and Thumper. Yeah, it's probably Thumper more than anything. What does anyone know when uh, when Thumper when uh, Bambi came out? Was it in the 1920s? Is that how early it was or 30s? I was surprised. I looked. It was it was a long time ago. Maybe it was the fifties or something. It used to be in the store, and then well, maybe Bugs could be a vice president. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay, the rabbits have a lifespan of ten years. Let's see. That's really, let's look at the, some, one more thing. Female rabbit is called a doe. Male rabbit is called a buck. A young rabbit is called a kit or kitten. Didn't know that. <coughs> the European rabbit lives underground in burrows. I think someone said that earlier. A group of burrows is known as a warren. They have long ears that can be as long as four inches. Okay. You know, that's really 1930s. That's what I was thinking. I was I remember looking that up. Sweet peas for rabbit smell. It is for the horse stalls, but good for chicken coops. Rabbits only need a little, so not, oh, that's cool. Thanks, uh, Amanda's Homestead. We have the grocery stores. They sell it here. Also, also goat meat now. Old ways, new times. How much do they sell rabbits for? That's something I want to ask you guys from being all over the United States and maybe some people in Canada that are watching this. <clears throat> the Asian market sells it near me. Um, what, like, okay, in Oklahoma, in uh, Oklahoma, if you look on Craigslist on any given day, uh, California and New Zealand, they're going for anywhere from $15 to $20. That seems like the going price for a meat rabbit. I was talking to uh, Rico's place. And I told him I got these for five dollars a piece, and he's like, "Crap, dude, they're selling for twenty, twenty-five dollars out here in California." What are some of the prices that you guys see around your area, or if you raise them and sell them, are you guys making money, or are you guys actually just making money for feed and stuff like that, not really making a whole lot, just kind of uh, self-sustaining itself, not costing anything? What's your guys' experience with that? Old ways, okay, twelve dollars a pound. Man, that's that's some. You can get a good steak cheaper than that. Let's see. So, like, how long do you have to support them before you eat them? Okay, Luke Lou, from what I've been reading, 
And I read some off earlier. Eight weeks is when they say to butcher them. Eight to 12 weeks is right in there. And from I could be wrong, but other stuff I've been reading up on, five weeks, you wean them off, your, you wean them off, your, uh, off the mom. So then you're only actually putting feed them to them for, you know, three, four weeks, depending on when you butcher them. But I think eight weeks to 12 weeks. Uh, when are some of the times you guys, uh, how old were they when you butchered your guys? Anyone got any input on that? Let's see. Never see rabbit for sale in stores in Canada. I knew Kathleen Charles, you're in Canada. I, th I thought some of you guys were. It's awesome. You guys getting any snow up there right now? I'm sure you guys are covered in it. Yeah, that is fast. <coughs> you know, oh, another thing is, too, about these rabbits. And uh, they, you put them in there at the buck, and then when they when he breeds them, it's 28 days, I guess, and they're having their their litter. So that's that's really fast. 28 days, that's crazy. That's I think that's about the same time you incubate an egg, you know, from a chicken. But uh, and I think the uh, bigger breeds they have a little bit more in their litter. I think I was reading eight to 12 or something like that. Not 100 percent sure. Three months and at the top end usually, but life is nature's way of keeping meat fresh. Alderman Farms, do you raise rabbits? <laughs> Rain Country Home said, wouldn't the red-eyed demon rabbits just laugh <laughs> when you cook them? Oh, that'd be scary, wouldn't it? Production rabbits grow fast. Heritage breeds will grow slower. Kathy, um, what are some of the her heritage breeds? And I guess you're talking the production rabbits would be like the New Zealand wise, the California and stuff like that. I'm really Luke's human human mom. Don't know if hubby will let me raise rabbits, but I might try to slip some in. You know, I was watching uh, Big Bear Homestead had a video on rabbits, and he said it's if he if you're starting a homestead, he recommends getting rabbits first because the manure from the rabbits you can put directly onto. Your garden, unlike chicken manure, you have to let set for several months and cows and horse manure or whatever. <clears throat> but the, the rabbit manure has it has benefits as soon as it comes out the bottom. And you can start putting it in the in the garden. Also, I think he was saying that some people, some of you guys might do this here, uh, actually get the rabbit droppings and put the seed in there and start your seed with that. Now I thought I found that kind of interesting. It's pretty cool. I didn't. I never really realized the benefits of the manure as garden goal, like you said earlier. What's up, urban girl? I ate one in California years ago. It was about a year and a half. It was yummy. Rico's place. Kathy Silver Fox, American Chinchilla, Czech livestock. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, and also my wife is looking up the benefits of rabbit meat. And I, if we found that, something's going on with my fire. I think there's a demon rabbit behind me. Rain Country Homestead. You seen one of your demon rabbits over here? No, but she was looking up the benefits of the meat. And has, I guess no cholesterol, a very low cholesterol. So that's a real plus. Low, low in fat. It's one of the fastest. I, I was watching something that said uh, rabbit meat. Compared to uh, cows, the, the rapid growth they have, something to do with the same amount of food it takes to get one pound is the same as, I don't know, it was crazy. You have to, I'll have to look that up and do a little bit more research on that. But she was she just kept naming benefits off. And it's almost like the only thing you guys need on a homestead is rabbits and chickens. You'll have your rabbit meat, your chicken meat, and your eggs. Is there an option so they can go help where needed if someone is out? <whistles> Only mods with red eyes rank country. With chickens, the pee and poop is all one. Okay, 
Ammonia can be burned in the plants, but rabbits pee and poop separate like cats do, so ammonia isn't. But that's, that makes perfectly sense. That makes sense. Amanda's homestead. Dutch. Okay, got it. Hi, freaky. What's up, bee lady? Let's see here. Has anyone got any questions? <clears throat> I'll tell you something I'm going to do with my... Uh, I was on a, a call with Big Bear Homestead and Urban Girl, and we were talking about uh, just stuff on the homestead. She's wanting to, to get animals and stuff, and I was asking uh, Jason about the hay and stuff and uh, winterizing the chick or the uh, rabbit hutch, and uh, Urban Girl had a, a really good advice, I thought, because I have a bell of straw out there. She said put the get them in the little squares and, and put them up around the <coughs> cage. You know, I'll tie them up there for insulation. I thought that was a pretty good idea. So I might, I'll probably do that. And I'm going to make, that'll be one of my videos, hopefully coming up soon, is winterizing the, the rabbit hutch. I went and got some, uh, we call it dryer felt, but it's, it's like a piece of leather. It's, you know, it's like a quarter inch thick. It's real, it's, it's like leather, but it, I don't know if it's really, it's not really leather. It's like cloth, but a real thick cloth. And uh, I'm going to cut it to size. And I'm going to winterize my rabbit hutch with that also. And uh, I'll have a video. I'll show you guys when I do that. It'll be pretty cool. You know, Suburban Hillbilly, do you treat them for any parasites? I don't know. I haven't treated mine yet. And that's I need to look that stuff up because I am i don't know. I haven't heard that of them getting parasites and worms. I haven't heard of anyone worming them. But, you know, it's about, about like anything else. If they can get worms. But I guess, I, you know, I don't know if they can get... Because you got your hutch up there. I know the big deal with uh, <clears throat> parasites with my sheep. The reason why they get parasites so easy is because... Okay, big bro, I'll answer that question. The big, the, um, one of the reasons why they, the sheep get parasites, because they're always eating on the ground. And the parasites are wiggling up through the grass and through the poo. So the sheep are constantly eating. And if you're not rotating pastures like you should then you're going to have a parasite problem. So that's when you start warming them, and then you start, you know, letting them uh, graze and stuff. But for rabbits, I don't know. This might be a question for Jason. Uh, you're up in a hut. They're not eating mine. I don't plan on feeding mine grass, you know, just free-ranging. So I don't know if parasites would actually be a, an issue. Do you guys know? Because they're up in the hutch, and, and there's nowhere for the parasite to grow. Just feed them some squash every once in a while. That, that's a natural... Uh, parasite remover, I guess. All right, good tip, Big Bear. How do you plan to keep them cool in the summer, Big Bear asks. Okay, this is how. This is what I've read, and, and my sister has some wraps a couple years ago. This is what she was doing. It seemed to help. Let me know what you guys think. Mites, okay, yeah, mites. Uh, all the farms, that's right. Mites in the ears are a problem. Okay, thanks for pointing that out. I forgot all about that. Uh, if your rabbits are off the ground no treating necessary that's see that's what i was thinking gravy farm said that's exactly what i was saying because my sheep they're always grazing so the parasites are in the ground and in the poo but anyways back to the question big bear asked me how do i plan on keeping them cool well my hutch if you guys watched the video i put the uh the wire mesh all the way around it and on the bottom so there's plenty of airflow through there and i plan on moving it to the east side of my chicken coop so there'll be some once the they'll get the morning sun and then once it gets noon and comes over, they'll have shade from the chicken coop to the uh, rabbit hutch. But also, you guys might already know this. I'm sure all you guys have rabbits do. My sister got the two-liter pot bottles, filled them up with the water every day, and froze them. And then she put them in there with the rabbits, and they just lay on them. And she never had any have heat strokes or anything like that. Always did really well. <clears throat> so that's how I planned, plan on taking care of What are some of your suggestions, guys, on taking care of them during the heat? I'm guessing the heat's more of a problem than the cold. Ear mites, yep. How do you guys treat ear mites? Do you guys know? Freeze a bottle of water for them to... Yep, that's exactly what I, was, that I planned doing, Freaky. <laughs> I want to float it back. <coughs> Keep the feet off the ground, Mr. Rain. Yeah, I got a man. I got a rabbit. That's a good plan. All right, cool, Big Bear. Big Bear, how did you uh, keep yours cool? Is that kind of what you guys did too? 
The heat will kill them quick. Yep, that's what I imagine. Okay, now baby oil. You're saying baby oil. What, you, you put a baby oil on them, or what are you talking about? Belay, thanks. Clever idea to cool rabbits. Yeah, that was that's my plan. I'm gonna put that curtain up. I'll make the curtain uh, for the winter. I'll make build where I can pull it down, and then you know keep those frozen water balls in there. I also put them on the east side of my chicken coop. Freaky, freaky. Learn what from Jana. We are in Florida, and frozen water bottles is what we do. Cool, gravy farms. That's what my sister was doing too, and it seemed to that's what, it worked perfect. That is what we did, but we had a hutch, so we added ceiling fans also. You know, she, I'm glad you brought that up because she did that too. She had a, a, a box fan on one side of, of the rabbit hutch because she had, like I think, four or five cages set up in a row. And she, put, she would set up water bottles in front of the fan, and it would blow pretty cool air through there. And that's what she did. I forgot about that. I'm glad you pointed that out. Rico, all right, if you don't know the answer to that, Rico, then I probably need to take your ranch from you. That means you're a moderator and that you can uh, moderate people's um, comments if they're getting out of line and stuff. I thought you knew that, Rico. I thought we talked about that. Baby oil to treat. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah, keep them cool. What? Baby oil to treat ear mice. Now, now, to treat those ear mites, Big Bear, do you just get a Q-tip, I'm guessing, and rub it around in there? I know you don't just squirt it in there. That's something Rico would do, just squirt it in there. Hey, uh, Urban Girl, when are you uh, going to do your video that gets directed from, was it Hope, that one? What's up, Anita? Freaky Geeky 2. Instead of baby oil, use mineral oil. Some, same thing, but without fragrance. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. I bet Big Bear's got some mineral oils for that. Olive oil works well too. Okay. Hey, Big Bear, you need to do a video on. Predator control in the house because you know it's winter time and the mice start coming in. I've got three mice in the last week and a half. If you don't put one out, I might just have to predator control in the homestead inside the house. <laughs> how to set a how to set a M O U S C T R A P <laughs> model three. I am lining up interviews. Interested in being interviewed, Dutch? Yeah, Urban, hit me up. I would do an interview. No problem. That'd be awesome. Okay, Big Bear Seth, yours get your mites. Let us know. We would like to send you some essential oil. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I got I got ear mites, and my kids got ear mites. Send us some oils. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already did one on the inside of the house? I didn't see it. I'll, I'll go back and look tonight. That's funny. You've got to, I haven't watched every single one. I watch as many as I can, but I'll have to go watch that. Hey, I'll, I'll give you guys. Uh, Heads up, I'm sure most of you guys already watched it, but I'm doing a giveaway. Go watch that video and leave a comment down there and get yourself in the drawing. Um, I was going to do the drawing Monday night. I'll, I'll do it Monday night still, but I'm not going to post a video until Tuesday morning. So when you guys get up Tuesday morning, there'll be a video out on the winner. Since I'm, I'll have a video coming out tomorrow already, I don't want to put two videos out tomorrow, so I'll wait and save it for Tuesday. But uh, So you guys will have all Monday. And until I until I uh, get it edited and posted uh, Tuesday morning. So if you haven't watched that giveaway video, uh, go watch it and leave a, uh, leave a comment and get in that drawing. It's not uh, if you haven't watched it, I'm not I won't ruin the surprise for you. It's a big giveaway. 
let's see here. That's really all I got on rabbits, guys. I kind of just wanted to throw some facts out there. I'm, I'm very, very new to it. We're lo I'm looking forward to it, really. Uh, does anyone in here have any, um, what's their, what's your guys' your favorite dish to cook rabbit? Do you fry it? Do you bake it? Do you grill it? Crock pot it? What's some, what's some of you guys' favorite ways? You guys got any? Last time I had rabbit, was probably 10 years ago. It was fried. It was amazing. I, I loved it. I was sold instantly. What's going on here? Fry it. Okay. That was my favorite. Was, they fried it. Some, I, went to, <clears throat> I went to a powwow. And I don't know if you guys know what a powwow is, but where I live is Native American country. We the Cherokee Indians live here. And I actually have her Indian... I actually have... Uh, Cherokee uh, blood from Missouri. My family came from Missouri, and, and uh, we have uh, we trace it back. My my uncle did our heritage. Um, we had some Cherokee family members uh, migrate from Florida out to Missouri. So then uh, they, my family, in Missouri, they end up going to California. So I was born in California, and then we moved to Oklahoma. But where we moved out in Oklahoma is Cherokee Cher Cherokee Nation. I mean, it's, it's Cherokee Nation, and. Uh, so we went to a powwow. Hold on, by the way, Donna is Robin wants to chat with you. Donna is Robin. Okay. Uh, a powwow is where the Cherokees get together. It's like a big celebration. And we went to these all the time. And this is getting off subject to the rabbits because I'm down with the rabbit talk. But I'll, I'll tell, I got to tell you guys a pretty funny story, too. It, it links back to the powwows. But anyways, went to a powwow about 10 years ago. I used to go to them all the time when we was growing up. And the Indian, the Cherokees would get their big war hats on, dress up, you know, I and mean, straight up like back in the 19, 18, 1700s. And they would dance around big fires and stuff you see on the movies. They, actually, they still do them all the time around here. I actually need to find one and take my daughters to it because it, it is part of our heritage. You know, they need to know that stuff. But anyways, I went to, uh, to a, a powwow and they, had, they were frying rabbit up there. And it's awesome. Native American country here, too. Our youngest adopt son is Mohawk. That's awesome, B-Lady. Choctaw here. Yeah, we got Choctaws in Oklahoma, too. Cliff B, are you in Oklahoma? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, we have a big reservation that um, just 15 miles up the road. If anyone knows where Tahlequah, Oklahoma is, that's a big uh, Cherokee city, too. Cherokee Osage here. Oh, okay, I'll tell you the Wheatree Choctaw here as well. Yeah, they're all... Uh, I'll tell you a funny story about, I have a brother that's that's eight years younger than me, so growing up, he always looked up to me. Well, I'd go to these powwows. We loved going to the powwows when you know, 10, 12, 13 years old, because they'd sell nunchucks, like real nunchucks, and the ninja stars. And that was back in the day when Ninja Turtles was real popular, so everyone wanted to be a ninja, or a ninja turtle, I don't know. Anyways, I bought, I bought a ninja star, and we always, we got really good at throwing them and stuff. Well, I was about, I think I was 16, I was 16 or 17, and I had one of these ninja stars, and I had this old, oh, Daihatsu Rocky, I think that's how you say it, an old Rocky, kind of look like an old Jeep, and uh, you had to start it, it wasn't stolen, before I tell you sorry, it wasn't stolen, it just, the ignition was messed up, but you had to start it with the screwdriver or, you know, something flat, get in there and start it. Well, I wouldn't see my little brother, and uh, we were talking and stuff, and uh, I said, did you know I was a ninja? He said, what? A ninja? And I pulled that ninja star out and I threw it against a tree and it stuck. He's like, whatever, I could do that. And I was like, no. I said, watch this. I said, come over here. So he got in the front seat with me and I said, watch I, watch this. And I grabbed that ninja star and I started that I started that uh, that Rocky with it. It started right up, you know. And he was, I guess, I didn't know this until years later. <laughs> he was amazed that I started that car with that ninja star. Well, he gets out, whatever. It was probably five or six years later. He goes, you know what? He goes, for the longest time, I thought you were a ninja. And I forgot I did that. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you don't remember starting that car at the Ninja Star? And I start dying laughing. He goes, I really thought you was a ninja because you could do that. That's funny, the little guy. <laughs> Being that little, really thinking your older brother's a ninja. I thought you guys might like that. It's pretty funny. Let's see here.
Rand, you have a black belt. Double wild. You got a black belt? I wanted to be a Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I think everybody did in the 90s if you were a kid. Let's see. Heroes in a half shield turtle power. I thought you guys would think that's pretty funny. My brother thought I was a ninja. You guys got any uh, questions or anything? I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Uh, okay, we'll talk about um, the breeding. I'm not going to put my buck in or put my doe in with the buck. Um, probably, how they go lay down, babe? Okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Um. I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna have them breed. Rain has double black belt Dutch. Wow, that's amazing. Rain you need to do some videos on that stuff. But uh I'm not gonna have my rabbits go in uh in there. Hey, no. Hey, Hadley. In there right now. It's a school night and they're up walking around, so uh they're gonna get in trouble here in a minute. Okay, yeah, since the winter is here. I'm not going to have, uh, I don't want any baby rabbits till probably uh, March. So maybe uh, middle of February, end of February, I'll stick I'll stick the uh, the dough in with the buck, a couple of them, and then have March, April babies. That way I'm, I'm not dealing with the, the cold weather. Because I've, I've read that too. And that's probably with any little, I know the lambs, they don't mind the cold weather as much. I mean, if it ain't like zero degrees. But they can handle really cold weather. By us reading the rabbits, the babies kind of struggle in really cold weather. <laughs> she has a skillet black belt. That's funny. Your hands tied behind your back and an apron and a vacant rack. But then together in late. Yes, yeah, so Big Bear Hops, that's exactly what I was thinking. Put them to, I was putting them together in, in February. In late February, exactly. We're on the same page there, yeah. You know, you get these, you get them. You're like me, you get excited, you got a new uh, feature of the homestead, and like, man, I want babies, but you got to be smart about it, too. You don't want to, you don't want to be careless, and or I don't want to be, in, because there's too many things going to happen when it gets really cold like that, you know, you, just, you know, I don't want to take the chance, there's no rush, I'm not in a big hurry, I haven't had rabbits before, so I don't have to get in a big rush, I need rabbits, baby rabbits, but uh, February, put it in there, have the babies in March, you know, and then uh, March, everybody. June, and I could June start butchering them. I guess would be about right. That'd be that'd be perfect. Hey, Big Bear, are you guys gonna get any more rabbits anytime soon? I know you said you guys butchered most of yours. Babies can't handle most people. Could call most people lose breeds outside. That's exactly right. Uh, that's exactly right. That's exactly why I don't want to breed them yet. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be care. I don't want to have any chances. Which my lambs, they'll they'll be lambing, or my ewes will be lambing probably in fe late February. So now that's still some of our cold weather, but that's when they lambed last year too, and they all did very well. So that'll be that'll be interesting to wait and see. I can't wait to see how many. Uh, I just can't wait because my on my lambs. They're they're a cross between Katahdins and uh, Dorpers, and I put a full blood Dorper in with them. It's a black kid, white body ram, so I'm excited to see. Did it freeze up on you guys? I'm excited to see what kind of babies that ram throws. Oh, there it goes. Yes, but I'm going to build them a Hobbit house. Like he is bad here. Okay, the hobbit house is that kind of like you just throw them all, in, you build a house, and just let them run around all together. Is that what you're talking about? I don't, I'm, I don't know that, that the lingo of hobbit house. I know some hobbits. <laughs> Let's see here. No freezing there, bee lady. Hey, Urpa girl, how's the weather out there in uh, Southern California? Uh, Rico went up to uh, 
to uh, 131 Ranch this weekend. It was it was foggy and raining. They'll be in the ground. Okay, uh, Big Bear, since you're having them on the ground and stuff, now is that going to, like we talked about earlier, bring the par or the parasite issue up? Or you just give them the cucumbers? I think that's what you said, cucumbers. No, you said every so often there be that treats them for it. Why <laughs> we use the wrench? <laughs> hey, Big Bear, last time you used the wrench and put some on time out, you got in trouble. You know, but you know better than that. <laughs> yeah, if you guys missed it earlier, Big Bear timed me out a couple days ago on Rain Country Homestead's live feed, and uh, you know it was. I expected it because I was mouthing him, and he knew uh, he knew I was mouthing him, and I was just joking around. Well, he timed me out, and uh, Urban Girl says, "Sunny, awesome! It was so hot today. Wow!" Uh, he timed he timed me out, and if it, some people got mad because they didn't know he was joking, but if you guys didn't catch that earlier, he was one hundred percent joking with me. And what's funny is my internet was lagging that day, so watching the watching that live stream, it was cutting in and out for me. So as soon as I posted that and I and he's and I seen him say something, well I had to get off of it because I just couldn't watch it. It was just my internet was lagging. Well then uh, I got some messages <laughs> saying he timed me out. I had no idea. I was even timed out. It was funny. We will get the squash every now. Okay, squash. I see cucumber. I think. Frodo knows. I'm just <laughs> yeah. You bully big big bear. That's right. New times. Big bully. <laughs> Let's see. I got about three minutes left, so I'll just tell you. Since we're I'm wrapping this up, I'll just tell you guys uh, what my plans are for uh, this week. I'll have tomorrow. I'll have my cooking video out. Tuesday, I'll have the winner of the big prize uh, video out. I'm not sure about Wednesday yet. Um, this week sometime I'm going to try to get it's going to be nice this week. It's going to be like in the 50s. So i got to do a bunch of wood splitting this week. And I also need to uh, to winterize. The big project is going to be winterizing the rabbit hutch. So I'll, get a, I'll try to get a video out on that. And also, what does your mail call? What does your mail call? Okay. You know, Charlie's, I don't really know. I think six pounds, right about probably six six pounds is what he's weighing right now. Nice bourbon. Thanks for coming coming and stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh what was I talking about? Yeah, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna get that hutch winterized. I'll be the main project for this week, and I'll try to get that out. Oh, and also I'm gonna try to get another pole barn build um video out on the pole barn build, putting the walls up. And, uh, and running, uh, putting the insulation in the walls. I want to get that out for you guys. Mud Pyro, thanks. Yeah, but that's, and I appreciate all you guys stopping by and, uh, and uh, watching me. Hey, man, I got to go. Great show. I will Skype you tomorrow to talk about slow food. Okay, cool, Big Bear. I'll talk to you later, man. I appreciate you coming in, stopping by. I know most of you guys probably get ready to go. I will send my address for the AR-15 Cajun Homesteader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send your ad. How about I send you my address and you can send me one? I thought that was funny. I hope you guys all knew that was a big joke. I thought you guys would like it. See you later, Mr. Rain. But, uh, okay. All right, you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. Uh, you guys have a safe, a safe week, uh, following week, and I'll see you guys next Sunday. And, uh, like always, be safe and have a good week. And I appreciate appreciate all you guys uh, stopping by and, and watching me chit chat about rabbits that I don't know anything about, but I'm learning. So maybe we can learn together. And a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys know a lot about rabbits, so it's good to have a network where you can learn from each other. I'll learn as I go, and I'll post videos about me learning stuff. And I can reach out to some of you guys that already know things that can help me out. So it's really nice to to be a part of this network. But I'll talk. I'll see you guys Sunday. Uh, watch the cooking video tomorrow and, uh, and see who wins on Tuesday. I appreciate you guys. See you later.